special presentation from the Weather Channel. some of the most incredible video ever taken as we go on Tornado Chase 96. But maybe a widely scattered afternoon shower. During the spring of 1996, miles, Dave Dahl's passion cool for weather turned him into an avid storm chaser. By Thursday, some Dahl, chief meteorologist and main weather anchor at KSTP in Minneapolis, out there and headed out with a five-person crew, of, uh, experienced chasers Mike and Fran Pike, two KSTP yeah, photographers and one on producer. This is a good one. Destination, right from behind, Tornado Alley. Good goal, I mean, Mission, to catch some to tornadoes on tape for a KSTP special series. After analyzing the weather and checking in with the National Weather Service in Kansas City on April 18th, Dave decides the best bet is to head toward Illinois. Baseball size hail reported here and now, now that cell is probably drifting down to here and we're right almost in the comb. Wow. We got a fly. The crews kept in touch by radio. Hey Dave. That thing's gonna put down a tornado. It's, uh, it's really intensified. We've we've got a we've got a funnel. Maybe we should. Uh... Yep, funnel fog. Definitely funnel. Yeah, there's a funnel fog forming. Can we stop? Get some film of this. That is really spinning nicely. That's the wall cloud, and it's falling right in behind it. But the whole thing is rotating. Wow. This time, though, the storms did not cooperate. Although promising so much, no tornado developed. A beautiful sunset. Jeez. Well, Doc got it. We came close. We were about as close as we could be. The only tornado warning issue. We were right there. Day one was exciting, but nothing could have prepared them for the drama of chase day two. Conditions were perfect. Hot and humid day. Very strong south wind. I hadn't, I hadn't seen a south wind that strong, uh, sustained south wind like that ever. Uh, it was at about 32 sustained, gusting to over 40 miles an hour. So it was a perfect setup for a tornado. The group from KSTP proceeds west, follows the storm along Highway 36, just west of Springfield, yeah, another, Illinois. Another warning. By 6 p.m., the action really heats up. We can have issued a tornado warning. Effective until 6.15 p.m. for people in the following location. Yeah, there it is. Look to the left. What do you want to do? Hop it onto the underpass. Yeah, we'll use the underpass as protection. Get for the underpass. Either one of those two spots. Either that spot or that spot. There it goes, it's coming down, it's reaching down. Look at the cone on that thing, it's coming all the way down. Woo! Yeah! It's rain wrap, we're not gonna be able to see it, plus. Yeah, I can see it. Right above that clump of trees. Yep, right above it. Man, that's huge. The big one, the big one, John. The big one. There's debris, debris. Touchdown. See the ground? Coming right at us. Here it comes, guys. It's getting closer. You can feel the inflow. It's now sucking air. The semi should not take off. Right. Look at it. Look at it. Oh, my God. Car just got flipped over. Get in the ditch. Get down. There's debris on the ground. Passing over 36 right now. There's the funnel right above us. Let's go. Look at the debris. Get down. Don't look. Here it comes.
God, look at the three. Okay, it's passing by it just barely. Yep. Never been this close. Luckily, nobody is hurt. The tractor trailer which left the overpass is blown over, as is another truck. The crew dusts themselves off and continues the chase. As they drive, more tornadoes sweep through the area. This one was captured on home video as it moved into the town of Decatur around 8.30 p.m. The KSTP crew follows the storms into Decatur. Elation at being so close to a twister is followed by a dose of reality. They get to see the destructive power of a tornado. I've never been so scared in my life. I've never, I've never been anything like that. It's just unbelievable. You just can't imagine the intensity of it. It was not until the next day that the true extent of the tornado's destruction was evident. Dave was given this first-hand account of the storm. And suddenly the hail stopped and you could see a wall of uh, heavy rain uh, moving very rapidly toward the, toward the home. Uh, there was a sudden whoosh of wind. We could hear debris flying and then stillness. And it lasted no more than 30 seconds. These were not the only storms on that April night. Station WICD videotaped this tornado in Urbana, Illinois. Many chasers chase for years without seeing a single tornado. But in just three days, the group from KSTP saw enough action to last a lifetime. The day under the overpass will always live with them. It was unbelievable. I can't remember ever having that kind of a thrill. Um, it's, it's a thrill that um, people can't imagine that they want to put themselves in front of a tornado. But if it's something that you've dreamt about all your life, you really want this to happen, and you can't believe it. You can't even believe it when you're hearing it. You can't believe it when you see it. Um, and so when I first saw it, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that it was actually happening, and we had you know, uh, six people there and four cameras on this one tornado. I thought, wow. You know, why was this my day? But it was, it was um, a thrill of a lifetime. Climatologically, the best area for chasing tornadoes in May and early June is the Texas Panhandle. This year, storm chasers once again converged on that region, hoping for some panhandle magic. Yeah, good points on One of those was professional storm chaser Warren Fadley. Every spring for the last 10 years, he has made Amarillo, Texas his home. Every morning when I get up, there's that element of mystery, uh, the enigma of not knowing what you're going to see that day. And no matter how bad of a year it is, uh, no matter how bleak it looks, this is West Texas and anything can happen. And that unknown uh, every single day when I'm out here is really what keeps me going, because I know sooner or later I'm going to see something. It's just a matter of when and where. On this day, Warren, as he does on many chase days, starts at the National Weather Service office in Amarillo. He checks the latest information for favorable conditions. Hopefully something, if something forms back south and comes through here, we're, we're in good shape. But, or if it moves up even further uh, north, of course, there's a couple hours drive up there, so we'd have to be leaving the next hour to really have any chance of getting daylight. Well, for the next hour, Warren analyzes the latest meteorological information temperature, dew points, and wind direction. Many agonizing decisions have to be made. Which storm should he chase today? Warren needs to place himself in the best position to capture tornado images on film. He takes a last look at the latest surface observations, then scans the horizon. It looks promising. He's looking pretty darn healthy in just a little bit of time. It's amazing. It's amazing how quick that can change go from relatively nothing to a, to a substantial storm in just a few minutes. The chase is on. Warren heads north on Highway 287 to the small Texas town of Dumas. The initial towers are going up 5.14 p.m. There is a tornado watch, which is roughly from 20 miles south of Amarillo running up towards Dodge City. Right now, everything's looking just right, and it's still relatively early, so we've, we've got a good chase on our hands right now and drives through the very flat West Texas countryside. The storms he's following start to collapse. A promising day is beginning to look like a bust. 
just as Warren thinks of heading back to Amarillo, new storms develop. This is living proof that you should never turn your back on a storm and give up until it's until it's really gone. This thing looked like it was dying just about 15, 20 minutes ago. Now the, it's obviously becoming a lot stronger. You can almost see some low-level wrapping in here, so maybe we'll have some uh, panhandle magic here. Warren drives to a place where a tornado could develop. Oh, look at that. That's space. A mad scramble ensues. He places his film camera in the best position. Boy, that could drop a tornado any second. It's a wall cloud. The storm has just literally exploded in the last 20, 30 minutes. It was nothing, and it went right into a, it looks like a supercell wall cloud that you can see under the, the Range Reef Bay. And there's been one or two very small areas underneath that look like circulation, but it's hard to tell. It may have been something, a downdraft. This time a tornado did not develop, but it was oh so close. You see, a lot of people mistake those for tornadoes. But it's, it's linear, it's moving out. The day's chase has ended next to a noisy water pump in a field just outside Perryton, Texas. I think we came pretty close to seeing it. This day turned out to be typical for the season in the Texas Panhandle. For many tornado chasers, it was a very frustrating year. Well, in all of my years chasing, which is almost 10 years out here, and from talking with other chasers who have been chasing out here for 20 years or more, this is probably uh, the most inactive season that anyone can remember. Uh, for tornadoes, it's just been a total bust. While the lack of tornado activity was discouraging for the chase community, it was good news for the residents of the area. While Warren cruised the plains looking for the classic storm to photograph, other chasers chased for very different reasons. Researchers from the University of Oklahoma in Norman spent their spring traveling through the same area as Warren. They had a different mode of transportation. They were in their Doppler radar on wheels. The radar looks into storms and searches for developing tornadoes. The researchers hope to get very close to a twister and capture its complete life cycle on radar. You said of the two, this one's the most impressive. Yeah. And it's got really strong building on the back side. Yeah. No, this, I can tell this one is probably, you know, you have the, that one back there, but this one's sort of out ahead. The radar gives them an advantage over other chasers as they move through southwest Kansas. That's why we have the radar out here to see, you know, exactly, you know, what, what the storm looks like, you know, before it puts out a tornado and, you know, if this one has the, the characteristics to do it or whether it doesn't, and that's all part of the research that we're doing right now. The radar scans the storms looking for possible cloud rotation. And that's pretty good. And then up, as the storm's going up, you can see in the anvil, you see a lot of this mammatus and the stuff really hanging down. It's a lot of the vertical motion in the storm. Storm appears to be not moving that fast. It's sort of coming at us slowly and moving a little bit to the north. Getting as close as possible to the storm gives researchers the best possible data. So it's an interesting area. So far, it hasn't done anything. But uh, we're just going to scan it and watch it and uh, hope that something does develop. Scanning the clouds pays off. OK, now we're getting a little spin up there. That's getting good. That, that might be moving the direction here a little bit too much here. Oh, yeah. He says two kilometers away. It's got to be getting closer. That's oh, good. Man. I know. <laughs> Classic LP. Oh, yeah. There's actually a funnel off the ground. OK, you're seeing just the big motorcycle wrapping up. You see the cones sticking, a little funnel sticking down at the cloud base. It's not extending down to the surface, but then occasionally off that dust soil, you can see a funnel coming up, just dust rising right into it, and just a nice swirl. Couldn't ask for a better location to get a picture. Dr. Josh Werman, the leader of the group, analyzes the tornado from the radar screen inside the truck. How's it looking, Josh? It's looking okay. It's still a mile away. Okay. You guys keeping an eye on it visually? Yes, we are. There's really not much cloud-based rotation at this point we can see. After 10 to 12 minutes, the tornado dissipates. But the excitement level is still high. 
It's early afternoon, and it looks good for other development. As the researchers move, an impressive oh, no, dust no. devil develops right on the side of the road. Perfect location again. That's definitely uh, very interesting. Keeps going. Not very far away. Actually. No, it's not very far. That's right where the road where we came from. <laughs> we might actually have to bust a little for ourselves to get out of its way. Uh, Researchers scan a news story to the west. You can still see some circulation on the ground there. Oh my god, look at that. That's just wow. The rear flank downdraft surges toward the Doppler on wheels. Winds gusting up to 70 miles an hour slam dirt and sand into everything. it was a great day because that's the closest uh, tornado we've gotten with radar data um, and it was a more representative tornado last year we got a couple very large ones um, but they're not representative of typical tornadoes with no storms forecast in the area the researchers take the next day to examine data no, from the day before being there we can actually confirm that this was in fact an f1 tornado um, it was fairly large um, but not that intense um, that's actually quite interesting for us because most tornadoes are like this. They're F1 type tornadoes. Um, so learning about how this one formed and also what the wind structures are will teach us a lot. The data collection was excellent. The radar captured the storm from start to finish. This kind of information will help researchers and forecasters in the future to determine where tornadoes are more likely to form and in turn give the rest of us ample warning. on Tornado Chase 96, we join other storm chasers as they look for and find the ultimate tornado. 